Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go! First story. Do you want to listen? Enjoy your phone call from the White House. I'm a disabled veteran. This happened to me about four years ago. Quick information. The Veteran Administration will cover medical expenses at any hospital if a veteran has an emergency and cannot get a veteran hospital. There are VA hospitals and there are VA clinics. The clinic is very small and they barely put in stitches. There is a VA clinic about 10 minutes from my house. The closest VA hospital is 2 hours from me. The story. I wake up at 2.30 am with a stabbing pain in my side. I'm almost in tears. My wife gets me to the car and we head to the nearest local hospital emergency room. While I'm being assisted by the doctor, my wife is answering questions and filling out paperwork. They ask if I have any health insurance and she tells them that I'm a veteran. The front desk lady says that she will send the bill to the VA. She obviously knows how this works when veterans come in. Fast forward about 4 months. I received a phone call from a collection agency. I told them that this was some kind of mistake and as you would expect, they did not believe me. I contacted the local hospital and they told me that the VA had denied to pay for my emergency room visit. After the denial from the VA, the hospital sent a bill to the wrong address and I never received any bills. And that's why I was sent to collections. I call the VA department that handles payments from outside the VA facilities. I asked the man why my ER visit wasn't paid for and he told me that I had access to a VA facility 10 minutes from my house. There was no need to go to a regular hospital. I told him that the one 10 minutes away is a clinic and it was 2.30 in the morning, they were closed. And he still kept insisting that I should have gone there first. Nothing I could say could make this guy understand that they were closed. And if they were open, they weren't equipped to handle emergencies. Finally, he told me that I had to pay for my visit. Revenge is mine. I sat around trying to figure out what to do. Then it hit me. I actually googled how to contact the White House. There are three ways. One, you can send an email. Two, you can write a letter. Three, you can just pick up the phone and, well, call. I chose option three. I called and someone picked up on the first ring. I explained everything to her and she said, Would you like for me to connect you to the White House Veterans Complaint Department? Yes, I would. After explaining everything to the nice lady at the complaint department, she said that her director would want to hear this. After explaining everything again, she was quite upset with this billing department guy who refused my claim. She gave me her direct extension and said that she would take care of it. The next morning, I received a call from the billing idiot with no common sense. He immediately apologized to me and told me not to worry about my bill. Everything will be taken care of. He gave me his direct extension and said for me to call him if I get any bills or calls from the collection agency. I guess sometimes you have to skip the middle man and go straight to the top. I would have given anything to be in his office when he received that phone call. This is a 100% true story. And in case anyone was wondering, it was kidney stones. Next story. Don't want to pay me what you agreed to? Well, pay much, much more. This happened many years ago, 1994, 1995 or so. My adopted family owned a locksmith company and of course trained me into the family business. It was an old school family business and my old man was a gruff but honest type and really cared about the work we did. After school and weekend work meant a decent paycheck for me as a teenager. We were paid by commission, so it was absolutely worth it to me to work hard and take all the calls I could. We also had an emergency line at home that we answered 24-7. That was part of our thing. 
You never got an answering service. It was always one of the family. That meant that pretty often I was the one running emergency calls late at night. So for context, locksmithing is one of those skills that if you're good at, it makes some things look really easy. There are also a lot of things that are fast as long as you know exactly how to do them. When you pay a locksmith, you're not just paying for the time they are working, you're paying for them knowing what to do. Like the old joke, fixing the machine by whacking it once with a wrench doesn't cost $10,000. Knowing where to hit it does. It was around 1am on a Saturday night. I got a call from a guy that's locked out of an early 90s Cadillac near the middle of the city. I quoted him $125 to unlock the car. And I could be there in less than an hour. He agrees and tells me to come down. I managed to be on site in a little more than 30 minutes. Despite a decent storm going on. Normally, people are happy that it's quick. Or make some lame dunk joke about how they should learn to do that. But the price was very reasonable for the service. Especially at 1am in a rainstorm. This guy. Ah, this guy looks at me and tells me he'll pay me 50 bucks because that was too easy. All smug and condescending. Well, teenage me wasn't having any of it. I shrugged, tossed the keys on the seat and locked the doors. Well, if it's that easy, he can get them. As you can imagine, the jerk was not so happy with that. He sputtered a bit and said fine, he'd pay me, just open the car. So I unlocked the car for the second time and said, That'll be $250. I've unlocked it twice. Instead of boring you with his four-letter vocabulary, let's just say that those keys ended up back on the seat with the doors locked again. At this point, the gentleman really got to yelling and threatened to call another locksmith. I politely explained that my dad is the president of the local locksmith association and I would know any locksmiths that would show up this late. They wouldn't be any more inclined to work a middle of the night call for $50 than I was, and wouldn't take kindly to his trying to cheat me out of my reasonable service charge twice. So he called the cops on me. Well, the cops showed up, asked me what was going on. I explained that I'd coded the price over the phone, that there was a verbal agreement to the cost for me to come out and unlock the vehicle for $125. And at this point, I'd unlocked it twice. The cops told me he could pay me to open the car or he could break a window. He said something along the lines of, I'm not breaking a window, it's raining. And cops told him straight, then I guess you're paying the locksmith. So he asked me to unlock his car. And I obliged. For the third time. And with his keys in my hand, I looked him in the face and said, that'll be $375. He got pretty angry and asked if I would take a check. I kindly pointed out the ATM at the end of the block and told him that, unfortunately for him, I required cash. Bonus, that particular ATM only dispensed $20 pills. So I got a $5 tip because, of course, I don't carry change at that time of the night. Next story, how to make 300 bucks in 10 minutes. I have a half brother who lives in Thailand. Important for the story, I promise. One thing Thailand is really famous for is having fake brand stuff for all things you can imagine. And if you know what you're doing, you can get fake stuff that is of a really decent quality. Some can even be better than the original, like the fake Rolex that often have a better clockwork than a real Rolex. Since Rolex is a ripoff that sells cheap as hell clockworks and they're over expensive watches. So last time he came for a visit home, I had asked him to bring me some fake Beats by Dree headphones. Over there they only cost like 15 bucks and are really decent headphones. Of course nowhere near as good as Beats but they can easily rival headphones you pay 50 to 60 euros here. Which is the main reason I wanted them not because of the brand name. So he got them for me as a birthday gift. He simply wore them as his own headphones to get them here. A couple days after my birthday, I went shopping for some new games. I had gotten several gift cards 
for Best Buy. So that is where I went. I had chosen 7 different games, most of them very cheap old games that only cost like 10 bucks. But on the way to pay for them, I realized I had forgotten my gift cards at home. So I decided to simply put them back where I got them. I have a serious hatred for people who decide they don't want something and they just put it somewhere instead of putting it back where it belongs. I had my headphones on and was listening to The Who, a really cool Mongolian band. I had the music pretty loud and was thinking hard where I could have put my gift cards. So I was really oblivious to my surroundings. I just have put back my last game when from behind someone rips the headphones off of my head. Violently pulls me around by grabbing my shoulder, I nearly fell, and start shouting at me. Me will be me. The guy ripping off my headphones will be Kevin. How dare you listen to loud music while you work? I've been calling out to you three times already. I never had such crabby customer service. What the hell is your problem? I don't work here. So give me back my headphones. Also, even if I work here, that is no way to treat another human being. You could have simply tipped on my shoulder or something to get my attention. How dare you lecture me? I saw you refill the game section. Of course you work here. Stop lying to me and show me the games I need for my nephew. Again, I don't work here. Look for an employee. Just stop shouting at me. I am not deaf. I can shout at you all I want if this is how you treat customers. I want to speak to your manager now. I will have your job for this. All the shouting had created a small crowd observing us, but nobody did or said anything. Me, finally having enough and shouting back? You must be a special kind of stupid. I told you two times already. I do not work here. I simply returned some games I wanted to buy. Because I realized I forgot my gift cards at home, so that's why I put them back. The commotion had finally attracted an actual employee, who turned out to be the manager. Kevin saw him come in and got a grin in his eyes. Finally a manager! About time! Now you will be taught a lesson about how to behave. With those words he threw down my headphones to the ground, and before I could react in any way, you stepped on them hard enough to completely shatter them. The manager says, What seems to be the problem? Finally you're here. This is the worst customer service I've ever had. This little jerk was listening to loud music and ignoring me. I then tried to get his attention by tipping on his shoulder. He turned around and told me to piss off. I then asked him where to find a game for my nephew, so he turned around and threw his headphones at me. They fell to the ground and broke. Oh, he's lying. I was shopping in peace when this psycho ripped off my headphones and assaulted me because he thought I was an employee ignoring him. When I tried to explain to him that I am not an employee, he got really rude and finally threw my headphones to the ground and stepped on them, shattering them in the process. Do not listen to this little brick, he's lying. I want you to fire him and call the police for throwing his headphones at me. I'm lucky he did not injure me. Sir, first of all, this is not an employee. And second of all, I saw you throw the headphones to the ground a step on them. As for the rest, there are cameras everywhere. So I'm sure we can clear up exactly who did what. And Kevin suddenly realized he was in big trouble. His face got really white and his voice got a bit shaky. The manager tells me, I'm very sorry. Do you want me to call the police? Yes, please. He wanted me to get in trouble with the cops. So it's only fair I return the favor. Then Kevin says, If I apologize to you and pay for the headphones, could we do this without the police? Do you have three bucks on you? I said I'll pay for the headphones and apologize. Not give you 300 bucks. Well, some headphones are very expensive. For example, Beats by Dre cost around $280. Look it up yourself if you don't believe me. I only had these headphones for a few days, so I deserve the full price of a new pair. And the rest of the money is a jerk tax you really deserve to pay. Next time you want someone's attention, who cannot hear you, simply tap them on their shoulders instead of violently ripping them around and ripping off their headphones. So. 
What's it gonna be? Police cool, then you are arrested for assault? Plus, I go after you in small claims court for my headphones? Or you pay me 300 euros? And this goes away. Okay, okay, you get 300 bucks. As long as you don't call the police. I cannot afford to get in trouble with the police right now. He grudgingly gave me 300 bucks. Apologized and said he's taken anger management classes. Sometimes he cannot control himself. At least he realizes he has a problem. He's doing something about it. But I highly suspect he has done stuff like this before. And goes to these classes because a judge told him to. Some might find it unfair I let him pay the price for real beats. But know that I never claimed my headphones cost that much. I said that some headphones like beats cost that much. And that I wanted 300 bucks for the cost of my headphones plus jerk tax. I really think he deserved to pay that jerk tax. He needed to get a lesson. And I hope his anger management classes make him less of a jerk. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.